All right, what is going on, everybody? Uh, Brought it Hawk here, and I'm excited to play this. So this is, I saw this on the Steam store. Uh, this is Four Mother Matron Extended Cut. It's a very bleak kind of horror style visual novel. It, it's free by Velvetique Games. I did play this once on stream, but it didn't really get very far. It didn't really get to an end. Maybe like two hours in, if you want to see it, there might be like a video pop-up or something. But let's get started. Yeah, this game is going to get quite graphic from what I understand. Yeah, yeah, content warning. That's what editing is for. Mother Matron loves you and considers your health incredibly important. Pessimist Credo or one of them, is that non-existence never hurt anybody, and existence hurts everybody. Thomas Ligotti. Conspiracy against the human race. Contrivance of horror. My consciousness swirls in an inky black river of nothing. It feels familiar. I've been here before. And every time I'm here, I always think it's going to be the last forever. Or going to last forever. And yet... Love the squishy sounds. Wakefulness. Somehow, my consciousness stirs. Where am I? I feel so strange. Deeply numb and lost. Almost. I rack my brain, trying to make sense of things. Questions that should have obvious answers, then come to me. Questions such as... Where am I? Who am I? What has happened to me? What do I... What do I know? I know I exist. I know I breathe. I know this room is disgustingly warm despite its cold, cold walls. I know that horrible wet sound is driving me mad. I know red blood flows... Through my veins. I know my heart pumps that blood beat by beat. I know the inside of my stomach bubbles and burns with acid. Oh, you know, this is very much in line with like feel the bones underneath your skin type thing. Feel the fabric against your skin. I know my bladder feels like it's about to bust, filled with urine. I know my intestines pipe shit. Through over a meter of contracting meat tubes coiled in my belly. But not much else. I don't remember what distinguishes me from any other sack of meat. I rack my brain. I reach back as far as my mental arm can reach. Underneath the old shelf full of baggage that rise unpleasantly and glares at me. Despite having no eyes that I can perceive. The way the shelf is crushing my arm. The act, is, the act of recalling is, in itself, painful. It would be easier to just leave it all there. In the dark, where it might be forgotten forever. Just like most of the people that were sent down here into those hopeless tunnels. To the place I lost myself and everything. And no, I won't forget. I have to remember... Or no one else will. I reach back further. The weight of a sharp corner starts to scrape layers of skin as I reach further in. Ugh, that sound's still going. Finally. My mental hand clasps around something. A small and soft object that compresses under my fingers. I pull my arm out. Off from under the shelf, the sharp corners gouge my arm open. Ugh. Crimson River runs rapid and splashes onto the floor. Except how? My arm never moved. I'm not even bleeding. I felt it though. I felt my skin shredding. I heard the sound. I can even still feel the object between my fingertips. What am I holding? Why was it just what I was looking for? 
It's a memory. It's small and hovers like faint smoke in the air. It's a start. Pathway to more. Yes, I'm starting to remember now. Lizzie, that's it. That's my name. My name is Lizzie. It's nice to meet you. That's only a stir of the breadcrumb trail, though. I have to follow it. It's easier to live through a memory when you can share it with someone. You'll listen, won't you? You'll help me retrace my steps? Good, good. Oh, but where to begin? Where should the dark fade? Where should I... Wake up! Oh god, there's voices. I forgot about that. Huh? Finally. Jeez. You were out cold, Liz. I, uh, what? I was covered in sweat, my eyes darting around like flies to figure out my surroundings. I was in a hangover of a deep dream that clung to me like glue. In front of me was a blurry shape of a person. Boy? Young man? Male, at least. He's staring at me with concern and frustration. Where am I? Who are you? He frowns at me. You really were out there to the world, huh? You're at the workshop, Lizzie. In Pack Rat, where you work. And I'm technically your boss, though I like to think we're all on the same team here. My name is Fred. Starting to ring any bells yet? Oh, right. Right. And, uh, what do I do? Looking at him now, Fred gives me the impression of a chubby bear. His face almost has a snout. His nose twitches back and forth while he's t not talking. Maybe it's just irritating his nostrils? He pinches the bridge of his nose and closes his eyes. Please tell me you're kidding. I suppose even with no memory, it's not that hard to deduce. There's sewing machines throughout the room, and I'm seated at one of them. Clearly I sew. I think I may even have sewn the sweater I'm wearing. I must be good at it, too. It's pretty soft and comfy. Then again, I can see the little scars speckled on on my fingers. Are these scars of experience or scars of clumsiness? I'd say it was the formal. Former. Ugh. I let out a little chuckle and smile. Yeah, yeah, I'm, how'd you go in there, huh? In truth, I was only half kidding. If I assumed or hoped, I start to remember the other parts once I woke up more. Fred didn't find the joke quite as funny. You people sometimes. Tell you what, Lizzie. You're clearly running low on steam. I really shouldn't do this. But you need the rest. The mother matron won't appreciate your slacking. Perhaps you can make it up in the coming weeks. Go home, get some sleep. Maybe stop by Spruce's clinic too. Get a checkup. You have two days off. Max. Damn, two days. Also, I've noticed there's a little symbol right there on the desk. Oh, I got a little pointer. Yay. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll go home. Except... Where was home? Wake up, me. I sat there for a moment trying to remember where to go. Ellipses, ellipses, three ellipses. Oh, um, Lizzie. that's, that's normal. No. Yeah, yes, sir. See, this is kind of a cool design. It's very bleak and I don't want to say like cement punk because that's probably not going to make any sense, but it's very cool. Kinda reminds me of, um, what was that game? Uh, Escape from Babdi? Wearily, I stumble out of the workshop. 
I feel exhausted in my bones. Aches and throbbing pain. Pain. Oh. And throbbing pain deeply seated in my flesh. There's a dreamlike haze resting on the world around me. It feels unfamiliar. Clearly, this is the place I should know. This is apparently where I work, after all. And yet, I have no idea where I am. I rack my brain and pat my pockets, hoping to find a clue. Fortunately for me, there is one. A small notebook. I open it and thumb through. Bits and pieces are starting to come back to me as my eyes scan the scattered diary entries, notes, and doodles. I finally find the most helpful page. A boarding drawn by Lizzie. What? What's the friend shed? And why does it say stay away? Right, I remember now. The boss was correct. I was in Packrat right now. Name so because how densely filled the area is. Okay, so we're here. Looks like I think that's supposed to be my house. Every building here is some kind of workshop or storage zone. Some places here are packed so full that you can barely walk around them. Unfortunately, the place I worked was roomier. More broadly speaking, I'm in the boarding. The town city? I call home. A secluded place enclosed in makeshift walls made from whatever was available. Scrap metal, old furniture, repurposed rubble. Outside the walls is an endless miasma of fog that obscures things. No one's really seen what's out there, and anyone that's attempted to explore the mists have never returned. I had to describe this place. I guess it's a it's like a half empty glass filled with dirty water. Glass is fragile, too. Ah, uh, that just sounds so cool. I love that Silent Hill-esque, like, surreal kind of vibe. Does that make any sense? More than what I just tried to describe. Well, it does to me anyways. More importantly than, than metaphors, though, I know where home is now. I could feel it deep in my bones that I needed to sleep. Though the details on the map leave something to be desired. Thanks, past me. I'll figure it out. My memory's just hazy from being so tired. So I pick a direction and start walking. The winding streets don't make that much sense to me, but I follow them all the same. I'm alone, but muffled voices keep me company. Sometimes, ruffled sobs too. Or muffled sobs. I try not to focus on them. I think I used to in the past, but my heart couldn't take it. Nothing I could, could ever do if I want to, anyways. Everyone's gotta do something for the collective. Everyone's got their jobs. As I have mine. Whatever the mother matron needs of us. The shoes are old and worn. The only... Only offering meek defense against the hard asphalt streets. They fit well though. The ground is dry today. Let me get the job done. They like everyone here in a lot of ways. Doesn't matter how weathered you are. The fact that you're still together means something in you is strong enough to keep you together. May your spirit grow like the calluses on working hands, or on the soles of your feet. So the mother matron says. In other words, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You grow through adversity, and by the end of everything, you're the best person you can be. It gives all the hard parts of your life a kind of silver lining. Or at least, that's what I take from it. Squeak. Huh? My thoughts are interrupted by a lump beneath my shoe. A panicked yelp of a small rodent. I lift my foot and the thing scurries back under the grate beneath my feet. 
Oh, good lord. There below the street is a tunnel full of thousands and thousands of rats scurrying for dear life through endless canals. I doubt the poor things even know what they're doing, where they're going. The one I, I stepped on somehow managed to climb its way up through the grating. Only for my clumsiness to scare it back to where it came from. Felt kind of awful inside for that. Throughout the boarding is a network of tunnels designed to tunnel the endless swarms of rats underneath our feet. The only one... No one knows where the little critters all come from. They flow like water beneath the streets. Oh, dude, this will be like Demolition Man. Just free rat burgers all the time. Thousands upon thousands of rats compacted against each other. Covered in filth and God knows what else. Waste... Waste matter clumped to their fur. Okay, you might need to prepare them a little bit more. Our prime oh, there, there we go. Rat burgers, our primary source of protein. Some kids have to fish for rats. Sorting through ones that are too sick and diseased to eat and ones healthy enough for consumption. The yield is never particularly high and the rats never particularly taste good unless you know how to prepare them. The one I stepped on, on had to have a rather spry. Wait, the one I stepped on had to have been rather spry, poor thing. I could only hope maybe my unintentional intervention gave it more time before some kid impaled it on a stick and roasted it. Ugh, I don't want to think about this anymore. I decided to keep walking to Spruce's clinic. Uh, hello? Spruce, you here? Yes, yes, I'll be right there. Stitching someone up back here. Please take a seat. I sit down on a stiff chair with minimal padding. It makes my tailbone ache, but I endure it. Spruce is known as the resident healer of the boarding. She taught herself by reading pharmaceutical and medical books she found in the library, as well as through experimentation. That last part's not exactly comforting. This isn't to say there aren't others that try their hand at medicine, but to put it simply, none of them are as good as Spruce. She can't fix you up, and you're out of luck. She walks into the room. Ah, Lizzie. Been a while. Those are some dark bags under your eyes. Working long hours? Not sleeping lately? Guess not. <laughs> I passed out at work today. Red told me I should see you. She rolls her eyes and gives a fake laugh. <laughs> ah, of course he would. You have to be sick. It can't be his fault at all, right? <laughs> Jerkwad. Let's give you a checkup anyways. Follow me to the exam room. A small joke as the exam room is just across from where I'm sitting. She gestures for me to sit on one of the beds, and after doing so, she does her usual routine. Checking my blood pressure, pulse, shines a light down my ears, nose, and mouth. Lightly strikes a mallet on my knee. I look around the room, noticing it's gone under some renovation since last I visited. I'm amazed you found the time to decorate the place. It's looking good. Aw, oh, thanks. I squeeze in a little here and there. Usually when I have to watch someone close while they sleep. That's a creepy way of putting it. Oh, you know what I mean. Folks in recovery. At least a few people that experience seizures. Stuff like that. Anyways, I'm proud of how it's looking. Genuinely can't believe I found that poster in such nice condition. I'm happy with how the Phoenix has turned we'll out be eating healthy living. I look towards the bony fellow on the side of the room. What about him? Is that a real skeleton? Spruce checks my heartbeat and lungs using the stethoscope. No, nah, it's plastic. A patient that scabs and junks a lot gave it to me as a thank you. Trust me, if I wanted to get a real skeleton, I wouldn't have to look very hard. <laughs> good, good one, Spruce. Really wish I had 
a skull, though. She nods and puts down the stethoscope. Everything seems good from what I can see. But that's just what I can see. Tell me how you're doing. Mentally or physically? Odd lately? Odd sensations, pain, nausea, shortness of breath, stuff like that. Seeing meat everywhere. I'm a little sore, but I think that's just from overworking. Maybe bad posture. And being tired. I've also been seeing things. Hmm? What kind hmm? of things? Oh. Sometimes, sometimes I'm standing there and the world suddenly shifts. Like, right before my eyes, it turns into something horrible. Horrible sounds, flesh growing where it shouldn't be. Things that aren't really there. My heart starts beating really fast and I freeze, terrified. Just like that, the world's back to normal. I'm panicking over nothing. My dreams aren't... My dreams are really strange, too. Mm -hmm. You don't believe me, do you? She shakes her head. Wasn't what she meant. I actually do believe you. Just thinking. Wish I could say this is the first time I've heard something like that, but... But... Well, some of the mumblers I'm taking care of now said stuff like that. Before they turned. I'm sorry, the mumblers? Really? Yeah. Can I trust you to keep a secret? I'm only telling you because I think it's important you know. Uh, sure. Contrary to what people think, the crepuscule isn't the only place where mumblers are made. Not anymore, at least. You're kidding. Where are the mumblers? Not in the slightest. Granted, people have broken down before around the boarding. You know that. Lots of our neighbor brothers and sisters struggle with feelings of anxiety and depression. But this is different. Mumblerism, or whatever you want to call it, is a much more rare and severe thing. It's like... It's oh. like... A complete detachment from reality. People stuck in a looping nightmare that never ends. And all they can do about it is ramble. That's... Mother helps us. And it's happening around here now? Why haven't I heard about this? As I said, it's really rare. I only have a few cases out of all the people I treat. And if the AC gang's been dealing with any, they sure aren't sharing. I'm trying to keep it under wraps, as I haven't gotten to study enough people to get a grasp of the emerging symptoms or causes. And I don't want people to panic. Mumblers already don't get the best treatment by most people. Imagine how people would be if they jumped to the conclusion that they're contagious. So, I'm curious because... Lizzie just straight up just mentioned the mother, so this isn't like a divine figure, it seems. They like talk like it's a person, kind of. So now I'm curious about this mother figure. Uh, I can see what you mean. To be clear, I don't want you to jump to the conclusion that that's happening to you. You might simply be having sleep deprivation induced hallucinations. Or maybe some gas from junks is making the air a little funny. Hell, maybe this shit yeah. I'm not even gonna lie. I've had some pretty fucked up dreams before. <laughs> so seeing flesh on the walls honestly is nothing new to me. Whenever I get sleep deprived. She stops herself for my sake. I mean shipyard. It's just more rank than usual. I thought it important to warn you though. For now, I'll give you some medicine that should help with the anxiety. Stop back for regular checkups, and we can keep an eye on it. See how it develops. What's gonna be in it? It's a mixture of lavender, valerian, lemon balm, St. John's wort, and some other stuff that makes it taste good. My latest and so far most effective concoction. Or so my patients tell me. The second mine was capitalized. That's okay. Thanks, Spruce. Anything else worrying you today? 
No, I think that's it. Red gave me a few days to sleep, so I'll go do that once I leave. All right, that's good. I don't see anything else abnormal with you, so I think we're done. Oh, I'll give you some tea that you can drink that can help you fall asleep if you have trouble, just in case. While I go get stuff together for you, can you run that bucket of food over there to the shack out back? Well, these herbs are now seeing why they call her Spruce. The Mumbler Shack? Yeah. It's about lunchtime, and they need to eat. Would you mind? No, not at all. <laughs> Great, thanks. There's keys hanging up by the door. I grab the bucket, which is full of carefully assembled sandwiches wrapped in paper and bottles of water. I exit through the back door, which leads to a small shipyard with a small, roughly shed-sized building. Maybe slightly larger than that. And that will probably be a good stopping point, and we'll see the mumblers next time, because we're about at the 26 minute mark. So, yeah, we'll call it here, and we'll pick up afterwards in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. What a nostalgic feeling, getting my ass beat by a valley girl. Oh no, here's what we're gonna do, because we're already breaking the law. I'm gonna drive over to your state, I'm gonna rent a convertible, and then you can just jump in for there. <laughs> Lost my wild milf. They've turned into a small, graceful dog.